Tim Kiefer, MIBTOnline.com. Hey, welcome to our meeting, our Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Central. We're here, and like I've said before, we're going to be here until at least May, probably, because we're going to try to continue to give that football education for all of our members of this great association. Uh, hopefully, you are enjoying the meetings, whether you're seeing them live or in the archive. If you go to our website, you're probably there now if you're watching it, you'll see a new tab at the top and it says apparel. Click on apparel because guess what? It's going to take you to our apparel center where you can buy these MIBTonline.com shirts. They come in all sizes, fashions. We've got different logos, different ways you can do it. So please go visit, visit our apparel. We'll go back to the PowerPoint and the play of the week results. So this is, the, this is our play of the week. So remember, from last week, it was, can a dead ball foul be changed to a charge timeout? And the results were pretty even. We had yes, 35. We had no, 42%. So that was the winner. And then the maybe, because this is a maybe. And we'll get into that in a minute. That was a, a viable option in this play. So um, some comments from the email, because I like the comments. You know, John Bosco said, kind of, he, he gave me a paragraph, but I'm kind of, Common sense, that was a basic, uh, his basic theme. Uh, Mike, timeout, give the timeout. Joe said no, no timeout. So how about that? We appreciate them commenting. Also some Twitter comments. Jim, you know, if you have the choice to give the timeout rather than flag foul, give the timeout, okay? Gavin, I'll give the coach the benefit of the doubt if the time was, or the timeout I think was really quick and, and the timeout versus the foul, okay? Tristan, the player coming in and then leaving by rule is an illegal substitute substitution, but the coach calls a timeout just about when the coach or the sub crosses the sideline. If we're going to grant the timeout, then there's no foul. If we judge the snap occur, then it would be a foul and no timeout should be recognized. You'll see right now they've only got 10 in the game. And the nice thing is, is that I'm going to highlight the referee. You can see that the referee is, is putting up that he's only got 10. He's signaling to his umpire that they only have 10. And now that the umpire gives it back to them, that they only have 10. So that's good communication by both of these officials. They are doing what they're supposed to do. You know, a lot of, a lot of people do this for, for 10. You know, some might just put one out, even though it's five, it, it just, it, we know it's 10. You know, this or this is usually good, or, or sometimes this or this, or some people do this, meaning that they got 12. So there's a lot of different ways you can do it. But it's just a matter of being on the same page with your crewmate, whoever you're bouncing your count off of. You want to make sure that you're consistent so that way you can communicate. But this is a good job by these guys communicating that they only have 10. So now we're going to go back and focus in up, on the, up by the, uh, the headlinesman. And you see the player comes in. So now the player comes in. He's, he's done, is he in the form? He's walking around. And then we've got, we've got a flag on the ground. And then, because the ball was snapped and the, the, the sub wasn't in, he was still uh, attempting to be a sub. He wasn't replacing anybody. Nobody was leaving. And the flag goes on the ground. So here is where I think things can get a little interesting. Because when we, you know, going to the timeout, giving the timeout is the easy way. I mean, that's what, it, it, everybody seems to be okay with that. You know, let's just, the majority of the people were like, yeah, let's just, give them the timeout and be, be done with it. A lot of times where you'll see this is on a delay of game. So the coach will run call a timeout a second or a half second before the delay of game actually happened and the back judge will throw his flag but then the headlines when the line judge will come in and say no they got a timeout before the delay of game. This is a different case though. The official actually had the flag out and the flag is now on the ground and now he's going to change it to a timeout. He has the flag on the ground. So I don't know if that matters. I don't know if that, you know, obviously a lot of people, they, a lot of people use that, that uh, delay a game analogy. But I think this puts this one in a little different category because it's the official who actually threw the flag and now it's on the ground and now he's changing his own flag to a timeout. I'm going to start with Mike on this one. Mike, I don't know how you voted but, uh, or what you thought. I know a lot of times, like I just said, it's easy to easy row to go go with the timeout, but is this one going to be a hard one to explain across the field? Now you got a flag on the ground. 
Um, the thing is, a timeout is more costly than a five-yard penalty almost every time. Um, you only get three and a half, and um, they are highly prized. Um, you know, you can make up five yards if you lose five yards a lot more easily than you can make up a lost timeout. So we feel that um, if a coach is willing to take that hit and give up a timeout, which is such a valuable commodity, we're going to grant it, even if the flag is on the ground. Um, that's what we've been told by our association, both at the high school and at the college level. So I, I automatically would go into this official and say, if we heard timeout at any point during that sequence, when the flag's in the air, even after it hits the ground, we're going to go timeout. Okay. Uh, I can understand that because that, like I said, that's a good philosophy. And I don't necessarily disagree with that philosophy. I just sometimes I wonder if, uh, if the flag is, is on the ground and now it's like, now it's the same guy. That's where I think, that's what I was saying before. So, you know, I, I'm curious, you know, Bill, Bill Lamagne, Bill, this is, I, I actually agree with the philosophy and I think a lot of us do because timeouts are important, but I mean, if I, I, I got the flag is on the ground. When, when is that window close? When are you, when do we get to that point where now we just have to go with the foul? There's a difference if we're talking about that timeout being called uh, immediately or if the flags hit the ground and now he's making the request for the timeout, now it's too late. But, but I totally agree with Mike that, you know, and I've, I've talked with coaches when I used to do the team meetings in the Big Ten, and they, they'll be the first ones to tell you, hey, I want to see that coach burn a timeout. I don't care about the five yards, you know. I'd rather have him lose it so he only has two of them now to work with as we get into the late into the half. So, so that part of it's accurate there for philosophy. But again, the whole, the, you can make it look, even if that flag's at the ground, maybe he was running down there calling the timeout and the official didn't, didn't hear him, but had it realized maybe from the back judge or somebody else that, hey, that, if that, that guy was running down there, he, we should have granted him a timeout. So you can take your partner off the hook on that mm -hmm. by recognizing the situation and, uh, and helping him there. I mean, I hate to say it, but our last game uh, in my career at, at uh, Wisconsin, uh, we had a similar situation that the uh, Wisconsin came, coach came running down the sideline and, the, and it wasn't granted for a timeout. And looking back at it, you know, between the short wing and the deep wing, somebody should have granted that timeout. They only had 10 players. Uh, pass got thrown, uh, obviously, to the open receiver on offense. And, uh, you know, if Wisconsin would have been granted the timeout, they'd have been playing with 11 on defense instead of 10. So, but, uh, so that one was as much on us as it was on them for playing with 10. So now it's time for our MIB Town Line Play of the Week for this week for August 26th. So here it is. We'll go wide on it. And we'll, we'll take the number down now. We'll put the number back up when we're done with the play. So uh, here is the play. It's going to be a pass play, and you're going to focus in on the bottom, the, the receiver on the bottom of the screen. So as here it goes, here's the play, and now you see this. Okay, there you go. You got a little bit of action there. We're going to run it again, and then I'll have the question for you. So you're watching that receiver on the bottom. This is the play of the week for this week. We're going to have the pull up on Twitter. Here he goes. Now we're going to run this. There, there it is. So there's the play. Okay. So now, play of the week. Is this defensive pass interference? Real simple. Yes or no? Real simple. On Twitter, at officially speak, or you can email if you don't have Twitter, Tim and MIBT Media. That is our play of the week. So it's real simple. A yes or a no. Is this defensive pass? pass interference.